Tonight, AEW presents a special edition of Dynamite on TNT titled Winter is Coming. It's all about the main events between John Moxley and Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship, but there are a ton of other matches announced for the show as well. Specifically, this match, what we're going to talk about now, which is tag team action. It's AEW Executive Vice President Cody Rhodes teaming up with the AEW TNT Champion Darby Allin to face Team Taz members Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Absolute Ricky Starks. Of course, there's going to be Taz and the FTW Champion Brian Cage at ringside as well. First of all, Let's talk about Powerhouse Hobbs. <laughs> what is that name? What is that name? That is such a WWE name. Why can't it be Will Hobbs? Why can't it be Willie Hobbs? Why can't it... Willie Hobbs... Why can't it be Will Hobbs? Sir? I don't get that unless there is a trademark issue. For me, Powerhouse Hobbs, I just... It doesn't roll off the tongue. I suppose maybe in a couple of months' time after we've heard it over and over again, it's going to be one of those deals where, oh, I can't imagine him not being Powerhouse Hobbs now. I don't know. It just seems really odd it just seems a name that i get it i get it. they're trying to say that he's super powerful and he's this super strong guy and he's this upstart and they're trying to give him a big push powerhouse hobbs though it just feels like a bizarre name it just feels like a really strange name but i suppose we're like this as pro wrestling fans when it comes to change look whenever we have someone remove their first name or they change gimmick or they do whatever you know, they cut their hair or they get a tattoo. We're all the way, we're always over it saying, oh, I can't believe it's terrible. We hate changes, pro wrestling fans. But Powerhouse Hobbs was just a name that I, I just don't get. I, I really don't get. Nevertheless, this tag team match, Team Taz, when it comes to Darby Allen, they've had an issue when it comes to Darby Allen for a long time. I mean, I'm talking back all the way back to May when Brian Cage made his debut, right? He injured Darby Allen and threw him off the ladder. That was it, uh, double or nothing. They're still feuding with him till this day. They still have an issue with Darby Allen. This feels like the longest feud going when it comes to AEW right now. If it's not Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio in WWE, it's Team Taz and Darby Allen in AEW. This this feud is never ending. And nevertheless, Darby Allen, after defeating Cody Rhodes for the TNT Championship at Full Gear, having a brief feud of him, Darby Allen is now teaming with Cody Rhodes, which seems a bit odd and a bit strange and a bit lacking logic there. But nevertheless, I'm really glad that Darby Allen is the TNT champion. For me, this is the perfect use of what the TNT championship is for. Now, Cody Rhodes obviously was always going to be the first champion, I think, because they needed to establish the title, elevate it, prove that top tier talents, main event level talents in AEW will challenge for the championship. I know Cody doesn't like to use the term mid-card championship, but that's what it is. It's about giving guys a championship that would elevate them to the main event level, elevate them up a level, and make them, you know, they're not going to challenge for the world championship. Darby Allen isn't going to be the world champion at the moment. He can certainly be the TNT champion and use it as a springboard to platform him into the main event. The same as the Intercontinental Championship with the WWE. That's the way I think everyone perceives it, apart from Cody Rhodes, who doesn't like to say that. Nevertheless, that's what it is. And I think Darby Allen is the perfect person for that. Uh, I think, if anything, you know, Brody Lee, when he was a TNT champion, it massively benefited him. I think not many people could maybe see Luke Harper, Brody Lee... As maybe being a world champion in AEW, even but when he had the feud with Moxley, I think people went, "Ah, oh, maybe too early." Now that well, after Brody Lee become was the TNT champion, he did a great job as TNT champion. Everyone started to say, "You know what? Brody Lee can be a world champion in AEW," and I think it's going to be the same thing for Darby Allen with the TNT championship. I think if he has a good run, has some big defenses and some big matches and some big victories, people will say, "You know what?" Darby Allen can be a world champion, and I think that will be the case for him. It's certainly elevated him. Now, of course, last week on Dynamite, we had an interesting segment with Cody Rhodes and Taz. Now, Taz was in the ring. He commandeered the ring, had the FTW championship out there, and he said that he was tired and fed up. He was sick of it. He said that he wasn't getting the respect he deserves. Team Taz wasn't getting the respect they deserve, and the FTW championship wasn't getting the respect he deserves. And he's been saying this for weeks, talking about... You know, issues with management, issues with Tony Khan, issues with the EVPs. He's kind of raging against the machine, as it were, in AEW right now, Taz. And it kind of took a, an interesting turn when Cody Rhodes came out and he complained to Cody Rhodes that the FTW Championship wasn't been taken seriously. Cody came out as an executive vice president and said, I'll run it up the flagpole. And I know Cody's meant to be the babyface here, but he came across as a total heel. <laughs> he came across as a total heel. You know, just speaking the corporate line, how in any way is that a babyface? 
the anti-establishment person is always the babyface in that situation. So it was totally backwards there. Cody saying, I'll run it up the flagpole and being slightly condescending when he said it comes across as a heel. And I know this is kind of Cody's gimmick at this point is that he's the baby face that kind of always comes across as the heel and sometimes unlikable. He's the most likable, unlikable person, I guess, in AEW at this point. Anyway, after saying he would run it up the flagpole, Taz took exception to that, saying, what are you going to say next? That's corporate. You're going to say that creative has nothing for me and wish me the best of my future endeavors. These were WWE shots. These were WWE shots, and I didn't think they were necessary. I'm not one of those people that says, oh, you can't mention WWE. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. You have to find the right balance when it comes to these pot shots against WWE. The Chris Jericho, that was a stupid line from Bad Creative. Loved it. It was awesome. It got a reaction from the crowd. The stuff last week, the, I'll run it up the flagpole. The creator has, has nothing for me. Wish me the best of my future endeavors. Taz called Tony Khan TK, right? Because it's meant to be a play on VKM. Notes from VKM. Weighing outside Tony Khan's office. That's a play on weighing outside Vince McMahon's office. It's just too much. It's just too much. I don't need to watch AEW and be reminded of WWE every five seconds and what a bad company they are or what the the horrific things are when it comes to the backstage politics in WWE. I know they exist. I watch AEW because they exist. I don't need to be told that. And the segment, it didn't warrant for all of these weird pot shots at WWE. They were just having a fine segment. You don't need to make these weird WWE pot shots. I, I know they were trying to make it feel real and they were trying to shoot and they were trying to add this element of realism. It just wasn't necessary for me. Anyway, we then get on in the segment with Cody then talking about Taz's son, Hook. And he says that you're raging against the machine here, but I'm the guy who's actually training your son, Hook, to become a professional wrestler. Taz gets really unhappy about this, says you cross the line. Cody turns his back. Taz locks in the Taz mission, tries to choke Cody out before people come out and Taz runs away with his son in tow. I thought the, the segment itself, when the hook and the Taz mission on Cody was fun. I thought it was great to see the Taz mission. People almost forget after the years of Taz being a commentator that he was a legitimate badass wrestler. In ECW, as ECW champion, I mean, Taz was a, a shooter. His suplexes were amazing. The Taz mission, the gimmick, it was all great. And I like the Team Taz faction. Taz's gimmick in ECW was kind of this MMA sort of shoot fighter, you know, choking people out, suplexes, etc. Team Taz is a play on that, right? Any Most MMA places now, they're factions, right? With Team Alpha Male or whatever, that they have factions, they have training gyms, and Team Taz is kind of a play on that, but in pro wrestling. So I like that. I like the Team Taz faction. And there are a million factions in AEW. It's similar to New Japan in the sense that everyone's part of a faction, but... To me, that reflects real life. That reflects, like I said, MMA. You're part of your MMA faction. You're part of your MMA gym. And it's kind of the same with AEW. You're part of your AEW faction. You can't be on your own. So you've got the FTW Championship, which I like that being brought back, even though it's ceremonial. Brian Cage, I think there's a huge... I mean, there isn't huge potential in him. He is a main event level talent, I think. It's waiting to happen. He's former Impact World Champion. I, I wouldn't have had him face John Moxley so quickly and then lose to Moxley. I still still think he's recovering from that. And I think it's kind of hampered him to the point now that whatever his next feud is, he has to be careful because he kind of feels like he's sort of floating in the background. He's not even in this match uh, on Dynamite tonight. So it's a difficult situation for him. Ricky Starks, huge fan of Ricky Starks. I've been a fan of his ever since his NWA power days and becoming the first NWA television champion after the bout was reborn. Huge fan of his. Think he's great on the mic. Think he has a great look. He's got a huge upside. Talk about potential there. Ricky Starks does have potential. He has potential to be in that main event scene. I talked about Darby Allen being the TNT champion and elevating him to the next level. Ricky Starks is another example of that. When Ricky Starks becomes the TNT champion, because he will eventually, he's got a huge, huge upside. And I think he's a future main eventer for AEW. I, think, I really think so. Will Hobbs, I'm a, I'm a fan of his. I think he's got a good look. I think the fact that he hasn't been tainted by WWE television, I think he can be an AEW original star. He made his, his way on AEW Dark and ha had a great showing over the spring and the summer in AEW. And look, he, he's getting the push. He's getting the push. There is no doubt he's getting the push. And eventually, I think they're going to push him into the main event. I really think so. If you listen to the way that Tony Khan was talking about Will Hobbs, Yesterday on that media call, they have big plans for him. They have big plans for Will Hobbs and the plan are to elevate him to a next level. That's why he turned heel. That's why he's with with Taz, you know, as the white meat baby face. You know, he was just doing so much. He was 
you know, get involved maybe with John Moxley as a, a backup and having maybe an occasional match on Dynamite, but being part of Team Taz, turning on Cody Rhodes, being involved in a major faction in a, on a majorly advertised match on tonight's show, it shows that they're getting behind Will Hobbs and they're pushing him. And I think factoring all of those guys, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, Hobbs, Taz as a mouthpiece, possibly adding his son Hook, that's, that's an interesting faction right there. That's different dynamics, different characters, and I like it. I think the name Hook, by the way, I think it's fantastic. I think the name Hook as a wrestling name is awesome. Obviously, Taz is from Red Hook in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I think the name Hook just works. It's absolutely fantastic. And the guy's got a future. The guy's got a future. He's an actual legitimate athlete. He's been training. Cody mentioned about training him at his uh, Nightmare Factory there in Atlanta. But Hook's been training for a while. He's actually originally was training with the... Uh, uh, was that create your create your wrestler create your wrestler something like create a wrestler training gym which is owned by Kurt Hawkins and Pat Burke of course Pat Burke is with WWE Kurt Hawkins with Impact Wrestling so he's been training with them for a while and then he moved to Atlanta now he's training with Cody Rhodes and QT Marshall there for AEW he was an All State Lacrosse player he's a legitimate athlete so he's got a future and it's in the genetics right Taz is his father one of the one of my favorite wrestlers in ECW was Taz. I know some people will say that he was so into his own gimmick and backstage he might have been difficult to deal with. That's Taz, I think. I, I love it. I, I'm a huge fan of Taz. I'm a huge fan of his work in the ring, on commentary. I love the way he talks on the mic. He's real. He has venom. He has anger in the way that he talks. That's why I think he's so great as a mouthpiece. I think we've kind of forgotten the ability he had on the mic because of the years in commentary. I think he's better as a mouthpiece and as a manager than he is on commentary. Obviously, Taz will be involved, I think, in the second show on TNT, probably doing the commentary for that. But I think his best work is as a mouthpiece, as a promo. I really do. I think he does a fantastic job. And Team Taz, obviously, the name is Team Taz, but none of this would work without Taz. He is so vital into making this work. Why? Because his promos are so good. And I'm a big fan of the faction. I am. As I mentioned, AEW is so faction heavy, but the great thing about it is that AEW is so faction heavy and pretty much everyone belongs to a faction, apart from Darby Allen, which plays into his character so well. He plays up as this loner, outcast, sort of grey character, and Darby Allen suits into that perfectly. It plays into it, and it's a great contrast to this faction with all of these people in with Team Taz. And then you've got Darby Allen, who doesn't have any faction. He doesn't have anyone he relies on or who he teams up with. And if anything, with him teaming up with Cody Rhodes isn't exactly comfortable to him. So I think I think that's a great contrast. As I mentioned in this match and in this feud, and especially with the heel turn recently, Will Hobbs is being featured. I could see him being built up a lot very soon. As I mentioned, I think Tony Khan has spoken about it openly. He's a big fan of Will Hobbs. I think AEW sees him as an original star. They can push hard and really differentiate themselves and separate themselves from WWE. Of course, it's great to have those ex-WWE superstars and world champions on AEW and have people like Cody Rhodes in there. But I think having people like Will Hobbs, having people like Darby Allin, having people like Ricky Starks, who haven't really been touched by WWE, Brian Cage as well, having those guys in uh, elevated positions and main event level positions, that's going to be the, the the success of AEW, is differentiating themselves from WWE. That's how they're going to thrive. And I think that's why Cody Rhodes is involved in this match to sort of mix in with this AEW original talent. So I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited about it. Who's going to win tonight? Probably, if you look at the people in the match, you would say Cody Rhodes and Darby Allin. It makes sense. Darby's the TNT champion. Cody's Cody Rhodes. He doesn't do a million jobs. When he does, they're impactful. Put it this way. though, I say that Cody and Darby will win. If, w, if WWE, if AEW wanted to make a statement, if AEW wanted to make a statement and they really want to push Will Hobbs and they want to elevate him to the next level, they'd have him pin Cody Rhodes tonight. He turned on Cody Rhodes a couple of weeks ago. If they're serious about pushing Will Hobbs up to that next level, powerhouse Hobbs, whatever you want to call him, if they're serious about establishing a new star, they would have Cody Rhodes do the job to Will Hobbs in the middle of the ring tonight on a TV special on a big special edition of Dynamite. Now, do I think that will happen? I don't think so, but I think if they wanted to establish Will Hobbs, that'd be the best way of doing it, and it would certainly be an option. Another thing you do, of course, have to consider is Jade Cargill and Shaq. Now, she made her debut a few weeks ago confronting Cody Rhodes. She told him that Shaq was coming. Considering it's a TV special, considering there's 
There should be a, a larger audience tuning in tonight and there's so many big matches as a world championship main event and they're hyping this up as arguably one of the biggest dynamites of the year. It would make a lot of sense for Shaq to debut at this event and maybe attack Cody Rhodes. We know that match is happening eventually. We know that it's going to be Cody and Brandy Rhodes versus Shaq and Jade Cargill at some point in the future, maybe at the next special edition of Dynamite, which could be possibly the end of the year or the start of January when it comes to Bash at the Beach or something like that. So it would be the perfect time for Shaq to show up. So maybe that's the case of maybe Shaq somehow plays into the finish or maybe Jade Cargill gets involved in as well. Nevertheless, I'm going to go with Cody and Darby Allen to win the match, but don't rule out an appearance by Shaq tonight. Certainly could happen. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen facing Ricky Starks and powerhouse Hobbs tonight on Dynamite? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys and chatting about AEW here on the channel. So be sure to leave a comment below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button. really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.